should say it, but normally all God's people say it. <laughs> Any truth? Mm -hmm. Turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 16. Jesus. A lot of times we say, the Lord. But is he your Lord? What does it mean to be Lord? I'll give you something that's easy to understand. If you go back to medieval times, uh, there were people that were called Lords. These were the people who lived in the castle on the hill. And everybody in that realm that they were in control of were subject to them. Everybody in that realm that they were in control of uh, did what it was that the Lord expected of them to do. What the Lord would have them to do. You know, when they went out and they planted their fields, it was for the benefit of the Lord. When they went out and they tended their animals, it was for the benefit of the Lord. So everything that, that was done was for the benefit of the Lord. Now, if Jesus is your Lord. Everything that you do should be for the benefit of the Lord. Now, ask yourself this. Do I live my life in a way that it is for the benefit of the Lord? Or am I like just about everybody else and I live my life in a way that it benefits me? <coughs> and let's all be real honest with ourselves. Most of us live our lives in a way that benefit me. But if he is your Lord and if he's all these other things that we talked about, then he must necessarily be <coughs> Lord. 
But here's what it is about Jesus. You can accept him as Savior, and he's not going to make you treat him as Lord. You have to want to treat him as Lord. You have to make him Lord of your life. You have to live your life as though he is Lord. You have to do all these things. It's not an automatic that happens uh, when you are born again. And again, I'm going to say this, and we're going to move on to another scripture. Probably every one of you would tell me, he is Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. He is the Savior, and He is the Lord. And probably everybody in here has used that term when you talk about the Lord. Probably everybody in here has used that term. Oh, listen, we're going to get to Matthew and chapter 7 and verse 21, and you're all going to know this one. You only got to look for it. Not everyone that says, Unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that says that he is Lord is going to make it to heaven. And I've got a big shock for you. A big surprise for you. Just because you go through all the rituals and just because you do the routine and just because you come to church and just because you quote scripture and just because you stand up against this or you stand up against this don't mean you're going to heaven. Right. Unless he is the Lord of your life, heaven is not your home. How can you say that? You're judging me. I'm giving you the word of God. Not everybody that says Lord, Lord is going to go in. And if you keep on reading, here's who's going to go in. They that do the will of my Father. That's right. Not they that do what they think they should do. Not they that do what the church expects them to do. Not they that do what the preacher says they should do. But they that do the will of my Father. That's, right. that's the ones that's going. And conversely, if one thing is true, the opposite has to also be true. If you don't do the will of the Father, then that's right. where are you going? I didn't make this up. I didn't come up with it. We need to read the Bible for what the Bible says. That's right. It's easy for me to read that. Hey, and here's what we like to do. Not everybody says, Lord, Lord's going to enter there, and he that does the will of my Father. And many in that day are going to say, didn't we cast out demons? Yet? Benny Hinn. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just talking about those kind of people. That's right. It's also, he could also have said, there are going to be many in that day that said, I went to church. Uh -huh. There's going to be many in that day that say, I paid my tithes. Mm -hmm. There's going to be many in that day that say, I went to work and I told them abortion's wrong. Mm -hmm. yes, but that's not what gets you in. That's, right. <clears throat> that's not what does it. Just like he said to these people here, uh, uh, not you know, all those that said uh, that they cast out demons. Uh, let me read it to you. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? <coughs> it's not, he's not, well, there's three kinds of people that ain't going to get in. That's not what he's saying. That's right. It don't matter what you have done or what you did not do. You could have done it in the name of the Lord. You could have done it in the name of yourself. But here's the thing. If you are not doing the will of the Father, <coughs> That's the bottom line. That's right. He said it. I didn't say it. This is Christ speaking. Christ said, if you have not done the will of the Father, you're not going to get in. Let me go on. <coughs> we'll start there again at 21, because I'm going to put this together. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. I got a son. If you've ever called him Lord, raise your hand. Everybody. Not just because you said that doesn't mean you're getting to heaven. Listen. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied or preached or talked or taught or told other people or whatever else you can put in there too in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devil. Uh, hey, when we went to church, we gathered and we anointed people and we prayed for people and we did all these kind of things and prayers were answered. Didn't we do all that? Or we could go on and say just like they were saying here. And in your name, we did many wonderful work. Uh, listen, uh, we went and we taught Sunday school and we went and we sang and we went uh, and we handed out flyers and we went and we did 
all this. And he's going to say to them in that day, only he that did the will of my Father. That's right. Well, isn't that the will of God? Isn't that the will of God to cast out demons? Isn't it the will of God to prophesy in his name or preach or teach or witness? Isn't that his will? Isn't it his will that we go out and do good things in his name? All these things are his will. So what's the problem? Some people do it because they want the glory. Some people do it because their church says if you don't do a certain amount of work, you ain't good. Some people do it because they think if I keep all the rules and regulations, then I get in. But unless you're doing the will of the Father, because that is your heart's desire to do the will of the Father above and beyond everything else, it is pointless. We need to understand these things. It ain't about the works. It ain't about any of the stuff. It ain't the stuff that does it. It's the heart. It's the condition of the heart. Where, where is your heart when you do it? Is you doing it because you love the Father and because you love Christ and because He's your Lord and you want your life to benefit Him? Is that why you're doing it? Or is it to get something for you? Mm -hmm. Listen, I mentioned uh, uh, Benny Hinn and I could mention many, many others, but I'm going to tell you something. A lot of these people do what they do because it puts money in their pocket. That's right. It gives them a name. Hey, it does other things like that for them. <clears throat> a lot of stuff that is being done is not being done because it is for the benefit of the Lord. Because it is for His benefit. And He said that many will say to me in that day, we've done all these things in your name. And then I will profess unto them, listen to this, this is something that we need to think about. I never knew you. And I want to bring it down to where we can really understand. I want it to be as simple as it can be. Uh, these are people who preached. That's what to prophesy as it's to speak uh, the word of God under the anointing of a God. These are people who preached. And these, these are people who cast out devils. He didn't say they pretended like they did. He didn't say they put on a show. He said they cast out devils. They did many wonderful works. And listen to what he says. I never knew you. There could be people sitting under the sound of my voice this morning that he would say that to. Think about it. Listen, we've tried to make this thing so easy. All I ever have to do is say the prayer. All I ever have to do is say the, sign the card. All I ever have to do is say the right things. All I ever have to do is show up for church. All I ever have to do is this, or all I ever have to do is that. Listen, you can do all of that and one day stand before him and hear those very words, I never knew you. I want to ask you this, and I want you to be honest with yourself. Does he own your heart 100%? Above anything and everything and everybody else. Because if he don't, he ain't your Lord. We need to understand this. Let me jump somewhere here quick. <coughs> he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Does anything come before Christ? No. He said, if you love your father or your mother, your wife, your husband, your child, your grandchild, anything more than him, you are not worthy of him. Think about these things. Well, everybody sitting here would probably say to me, I don't. God's first. When your wife or your husband gives you the what for <laughs> because you left for two hours and went to church and ignored them and you stay home the next time, who came first? That's right. Amen. I finally got that ticket to that game that was so hard to get, but it's on Sunday. I'm going. God will understand who came first. That's right. Amen. Amen. I got up last night in the middle of the night and in the dark, I stubbed my toe on my bed. I got to stay home. 
who came first. We better understand. We've tried to make this so easy that God is such a God of love that all we got to do is join hands and sing Kumbaya <laughs> and be nice to people and pat animals on the head and we're all going to heaven. That's the kind of God we've tried to deliver to America. He is a God who will not tolerate being put in second place. He will not. He won't stand for it. You can disagree with me and you sit there and think you're full of mud and you don't know what you're talking about. Maybe I don't, but the Bible does. That's right. Amen. Amen. And this is the word of God. That's right. And if anything, anything comes before him, he's not your Lord. That's right. If you love anything more than him, he's not, well, I don't really love it more. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. If you put it before him, you love it more. Right. You want that thing more. You desire that thing more. That's more important to you. But you're just saying that because I'm this church and you want to make me feel bad. If I have the ability to make you feel bad, something's wrong. <laughs> but if God is making you feel bad, mm -hmm. something's worse. That's right. If you feel bad or you feel guilty when the word of God is spoken, then you've got a problem with God. Not with me. And we need to heed, church. We need to listen and we need to understand. Nothing can come before God. And I know you're sitting there and you're thinking, I got it all zipped up and I got it all sewed up. Them guys that cast out devils and prophesied and did wonderful works thought they had it too. But he said, I never knew you. Away with you. It ain't all about doing the right thing. It ain't all about going through the right motions, saying the right words, acting in the right way, all that. It ain't about all of that. It's about making him Lord. And if he's Lord, that means he's above everything, everybody else. That's right. Nothing comes before him. He is always first. Amen. You say that to try to get people to go to church. I say it because the Bible says it. That's right. And while we're on that, I'll touch on that. This is the body of Christ. That's right. The church is the body of Christ. He put it together. I, it wasn't my idea. I didn't set it up. And he said it is the church where you need to go <coughs> to get strength, right. to get encouragement, to learn, to grow. God said it. I didn't That's say right. it. Is it necessary? Yes, it's necessary. Why is it necessary? Because God said it's necessary. Because this is how God chose to do it. And if you put anything else above the body of Christ, then how can Christ be your Lord? That's right. <laughs> Listen to what he says here. He said, Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Again, think about the words that are being said here. Don't that just kind of blow your mind? These people cast out devils. These people <coughs> prophesied. These people did wonderful works. And he said, you work iniquity. How can they work iniquity if they're doing all that kind of stuff? Because iniquity is in their heart. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what happens on the outside. It's what's in your heart. And in your heart, he must be Lord. He must be seated on the throne of your heart. And I'm going to tell you something, people. 99.9% .9 of us are sitting on the throne. You think about it. Your life is designed. Your life is orchestrated. Your life is lived in such a way that it benefits you. Right. It's for your good. It's for your desire. It's for your want. It's to make you feel better. It is not for the benefit of the Lord. This can kind of go back to what we talked about in Sunday school. If you put him first, far above everything else, he'll take care of the rest of it. But we want to try to take care of the rest of it and give him whatever little bit's left over. He won't settle for that. He will not put up with that. And I am scared that there may be people sitting under the sound of my voice that one day are going to hear, I never knew you. And you're going to say, didn't you see me in church? I never knew you. 